Do you remember this scene? Well, of course you do. With hype around the Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse release and me being out of college, I wanted to recreate that scene from the iconic live-action multiversal Spider-Man movie. Ever since I saw this movie, I wanted to make something about it with stop motion. At first, I decided to wait until I had the official figures, but, uh... Yeah, no. I decided to go with lookalikes, you know, close enough. This one's red and blue, this one's tall red and blue, and this one's Tom Holland. I wish I had the real Toby and Andrew figures to make this scene, but I didn't want to spend all that money and wait all that time for those figures, so hopefully I'll have them in the future, but for now, I have what I have. So after deciding what I wanted to do with the scene, I threw up the green screen and I started animating. I have the Andrew landing scene going on right now. I'm done with the Toby Maguire figure for now, um, and then obviously tomorrow, or or maybe after work, I will do the Tom Holland one. Yeah, all I'm doing here is just watching this video. Obviously, you just gotta try to recreate it the best I can. And then obviously I'm gonna wanna slow it down to recreate the movements. So I have Toby's movements done right now. And then I just have to recreate this landing scene with um, Andrew right now. So something in animation people do is masking out the stands that are using for the figures. So obviously if I'm using a green screen here, I can just paint out the green. And honestly, it's something I've really never done before this year. And when I made a video earlier this year about AI making a Spider-Man stop motion for me, it's something I had to do for the first time. And I did it in a pretty weird method, I'm not gonna lie. And this time I'm learning a much better method. And I don't know why I didn't think of this in the first place, but it's okay, I'm here now. But yeah, here I am masking out Tom Holland's stand, and I knew he was gonna be the focal point of the video, he was gonna be right front and center, so I knew I had to mask him as perfectly as possible, so I decided to go in with the smallest brush size and paint out the stand as best as I could. So yeah, when it comes to editing like this, I learned that it comes to the smallest of details. The stand I'm using for this, it's actually like a combination of two stands. This was made for the smaller Miles Morales figure that they released, um, so then I just decided to replace it with this bigger one for the scale of the Marvel Legends. And it is a pretty strong stand, so I'm glad that I came up with the idea, because <laughs> otherwise I would not have had a proper stand to animate with. So after getting Toby and Andrew's initial animations done, I decided to get the movie footage and use it as an overlay for the movements I'd need to use for the clip. But in the end, I knew I wanted to make my own background so it feels like my own creation, and I wanted to use things I had in my room. The Statue of Liberty head that they land on was this random Lego piece I had on my table, coincidentally. I decided to take a picture of it against the green screen. It didn't work out too good at first, this is what it looked like. So then I decided to put it against a blue screen so it more matched the blue background I'm going for. The giant shield the Statue of Liberty was holding in the movie went from this random circle I found on my table to an actual Captain America shield with stuff under it to mimic the scaffolding, and I think it worked out pretty well here. The colors kind of even matched up as well with the red highlights. But something could not just be a physical object, you know, like the moon, obviously, the clouds, and the shine from the sky. So I decided to go into my drawing app on my iPad, draw that into a PNG file with a PNG of the moon, so now I have multiple layers to work with, one layer being the moon and the other one being the shine and the clouds. And I also later decided to add this shadow layer onto the landing pose just to add a little bit of depth to it because it did look a little bit flat. Now typically people edit projects like this on computers but I'm not using that. I, <laughs> I'm using a first generation iPad Pro that I've always been using for my videos and the amount of layers I'm using here is making the iPad lag, like it is suffering. So if I wanted to see the final product of any adjustment I made, I needed to save it onto my camera roll and so I did this over and over and over and over and over and well okay you get the point every single video saved has the slightest difference but the tiniest details can go a long way because obviously you see the sky the moon the clouds and the city in the background you have the shield and the scaffolding on the left in the middle and then obviously the spider-man go from the back to the front along with the statue of liberty head so everything's gonna move at a different way especially if I'm trying to mimic a camera angle so I did my best to mimic that and after after many many saves, I came up with something that I'm pretty proud of. Something I decided to add in last minute was the Spider-Man fading in from the clouds. At first it looked like this where they weren't doing that, but then they decided to do that on one of my edits on accident and I thought it looked pretty cool and I thought it was a good idea so I did it intentionally this time fading them smoothly instead of having a choppy one frame transition. I had a bunch of fun doing this, it did take about 3-4 days, a lot of adjusting and stuff, you know, accounting it to work and just adjusting the movements in general, but the animation part of it was pretty simple. For for me i enjoyed that so but yeah i will be sure to continue on with stop motion in the future and maybe i'll keep making these behind the scenes videos so yeah like comment and subscribe if you have not already and i will see you guys in the next video